Well, I think that question might be better for the people who were running the program, but I, I'll try to hazard an answer um, because not much had come out about it. And uh, what I mean by not much, uh, you know, when you do a program, you should issue a report card. You should say, okay, this is what we have done. This is the number of people we have put in the program. This is how we run the program, this and that. So when it's out there in the public domain, then it's possible for analysts like myself to look at it and say, okay, it could have been tweaked this way to work better. But you see, when you have something shrouded in secrecy, and people say, oh, we don't want you to know what is going on. I mean, then how do I know you are working if you don't want me to know what is going on with government programs? So that's the drawback of that. But I think I, I have an idea. I, there was a program that was um, embedded in one of the security offices in Abuja. And um, uh, it was supposed to reach out uh, to these people. In fact, uh, um, the, the conception, as usual, is uh, very lofty. But I don't know what the implementation was, and I don't know what the output was, so I cannot do an evaluation <laughs> right now. So unless there's a feedback, uh, some feedback mechanism from the field, from people who participated in the program, oh yes, I will have uh, gone into a life of extremism and radicalism and uh, fundamentalism, but I was uh, brought back from the brink by this program, uh, we, we have no way. And so what is the measure? So that's a problem with our security programs in Nigeria. What are the metrics? Yes. What, are, what kind of measures are we putting out there to identify how many people have been saved, how many people um, were addressed, what was the efficiency, the cost efficiency of the program? That's also why it's easy uh, for a lot of things not to be done because there's not a lot in the public domain for okay. people you, to, you, uh, you, you know, to examine. You talked about uh, sleeper cells sort of in the country and the, those that are doing the recruitment right now. But the efforts of the military and the deadline given by the president to end terrorism, how would that help in taking out, the, would that even affect the sleeper cells? Or the sleeper cells are just on their own and their military seem to be more focused on taking out the ones that have already come forth? Yeah, the, the military engagement in the Northeast right now is um, a frontal engagement, it's a frontal battle. And uh, I, I'm sure you are aware that there's still uh, one or two local governments. Before, about two weeks ago or three weeks ago, they said two local governments. But now we are down to one local government still under BH control in the northeast. So the um, effort of the military is to dislodge them entirely and then also secure or sanitize Sambiza uh, forest. Um, now, the, so that's that effort that's going on. But what is happening in many communities, even including many communities right here in Lagos, sir. Well, not many. Some communities right here in Lagos. Is that you have um, new seeds of um, extremism being sown. How are those seeds being sown? <laughs> I gave you some of the... I gave you some of the... Uh, uh, you know, methods. Well, I'll, I'll, yeah, I know. They are being sown because there are people sowing these seeds. And my, my point to you this morning, uh, Nota, is that the authorities should move and get some of these, you know, uproot some of these seeds of evil before they become a new Boko Haram uh, down the road for us. You know, or in fact, before they go to the U.S., because the U.S. has been telling us this, uh, that there is this um, recruitment going on here. And in fact, the one that concerns me the most, even now, let's not even talk about recruitment, is there this, there's a chatter about Nigeria being an imminent... Um, uh, uh, an imminent target. So I, I, I worry about that even more than because uh, these ones that are threatening us, they are more deadly than bees. If, if we have the sleeper cells yes, um, or seeds being sown, well, yes. when I said, how are they being sown? You talked about the role of the government needs to move. Yeah. What about the families, the individuals, the society itself looking at what see, okay, how can we uproot this? Well, let me give you, I'll give you a case study, a case that I'm working on right now. Um, a family uh, got in one of these problems and their child was being radicalized. And uh, so they went to the authorities and said, come and do something. No, my son is being radicalized. Though. He is, in fact, he's getting ready to go to Syria. He's changed his name to an Arabic name and uh, this and that. He, he's getting ready to go to Syria. And uh, unfortunately, nothing was done or had been done until the young man left. 
And he is over there now, and the parents are desperately crawling onto every straw, and they're trying to get him back. Well, for I think for about uh, two or three months now, they haven't heard from him, so they don't know whether he's alive or dead. So, uh, uh, so the parents say to me, "Look, you are always making a lot of uh, talk about uh, Boko Haram and this. Look at this, my case, and see what you can do to advise the authorities." about some, a trend that is growing here, the same trend that, you know, we, we, the authorities have been, that's the foreign authorities have been alerting us about. Yes. You know, so that is, that's the reality of it. And so the question was now, but how? How did this happen? In fact, even just last weekend, I learned that um, some, um, there are some other efforts being made, in situ efforts, that is uh, being able to get people together in different locations, to start giving them, uh, that's uh, rescripting them in terms of uh, a fundamentalist script. So there are, there are these kinds of difficulties. And my, my appeal to you this morning, or my appeal to your attorneys through you, uh, your medium, is that look, anytime there are these um, alerts or reports, in fact, actual reports, and with evidence, because here we have telephone evidence, there's a lot of people to be picked up right now. Uh, the authorities should really, they, because you know they are very busy, they have a lot of things to do, but this is a, a clear and present danger. That's the language uh, Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes used. He said it's a clear and present danger. So it's not something that you should say, okay, let this go to the back burner while we are trying to sort out some things. So I, I think, and this, when I say the authorities, I mean all authorities now, every governmental authority out there that has a badge, that has that authority, to keep Nigerians safe, you really be concerned about this and uh, see what they can do to help out. Okay, some experts have um, said emphatically that the, the battle against Boko Haram is not going to be won solely on the front lines, you know, the battlefield. It has to be hearts and minds. Yes, that this government has to re-strategize. How then, or what other avenues can be pursued? Well, I, I think, um, yes, the, you, you never win a battle against uh, insurgency or terrorism only on the battlefield because the battlefield for them is everywhere. So where's the battlefield? Where's the real battlefield? You are fighting in the northeast. They are bombing Yanyan. They are bombing uh, Keno. You know, uh, they are bombing uh, mosques in uh, Adamawa. So wh where is the real battlefield? You know, that's the question here. So I don't know where the real battlefield is. And certainly it's not all of Nigeria. But having said that, we know that the bulk of the um, counter-terrorist operation, the shooting operation, is going on in the Northeast right now. Now, we need to look at other things. We need to look first, the most important thing, look where first you lead with counter-terrorism, counter-insurgency, uh, city or coin. Then you need to look at um, anti-terrorism, that is preventive measures. Uh, to, um, you know, head off uh, terrorist attacks, uh, even terrorist narratives, you know, then you need to look at ideological reorientation, which is where we are feeling the, the radicalization I'm talking about. You need to look at ideological orientation, and then you now, now need to look at governance issues, because governance issues are still there, because, you know, they, they kind of... Uh, Fund the embers of, uh, uh, you know, these uh, violence, you know, so uh, or anti-government people. Because so most of them, if you really, most terrorists that are captured, they'll tell you that it's government they want to lash out against. But it's just that the citizen there nearby was Collateral happened damage. to be there, so he just took them out. And it's government; they have nothing against their neighbor, but it's the government. So uh, having said that, I think um, there are many things uh, that should be done. The uh, physical, uh, first of all, let's see the coin and city as it's going on right now because that's something that has to be done on a military level. But then beyond the military, you have all the other agencies and you have the governments themselves and they need to have programs. First of all, the military itself needs to befriend the uh, people in these areas and they are, they are doing that by their hearts and minds programs. They do uh, free eye, eye checks. Uh, free medical, boreholes, uh, uh, even organizing football competition. They, there's a reach out program specifically in the military. Uh, and um, so they, when they do that, they soften the hearts of uh, 
the members of this community and these people now come and say you know what that man down the road uh, he's been he's a radical or he's been throwing bombs and we've seen him actually and then that gives information that gives and then people who wanted to join that will also dissuade them now anti that's a coin, city coin uh, anti-terrorism you need to have programs robust programs in place preventive programs first to physically secure uh, important government locations because even with the best of um, with the best of uh, has and mind programs you have people will still people are still angry a lot of people will be boiling and they'll be seeking and they want to lash out so you need to because like you see this uh, problem the guerrilla warfare we have right now a young girl goes in somewhere and detonates and things you need to have programs to uh, watch out for that you are you need uh, profiling you need profiling and uh, you need to let some people understand that look when you see uh, a suicide bomber maybe it's your time to check out because it's only the nearest person to that bomber that can keep the bomber from killing many people and so you must engage that bomber and perhaps even grip them so that i'm sorry you pay but mm -hmm. others will be saved so and you know god will reward you later <laughs> Dr. Komo, so but uh, all that is uh, <laughs> you know some will argue that this all these programs you're talking about are there yes but the issue of information management is what's problem. lacking how can we go about handling all of this